things on that. I'm uh, to have a special rapporteur for uh, Vietnam from the Human Rights Council. Also, let me uh, expand a little bit. You, um, uh, I certainly agree with you that words need to be backed up by strong actions. And I think that we still do have economic incentives uh, or leverage with Vietnam. They still want to have increased relationships with the United States and for security arrangements and other issues. Uh, I was there with Speaker Hastert in, in 2006, uh, and I think the Vietnamese people want to have a strong relationship with the United, with the United States. And I think those are leverage points that the United States government uh, can use. The user did have recommendations in our chapter on this, which I'll put in for the record. Uh, but basically, enforcing laws or um, that um, uh, outlaw forced renunciations of faith and establish specific penalties in the Vietnamese criminal code for anyone who carries out such practices, um, and the far-reaching national security provisions in Article 88 or Article 258 of the criminal code, which have resulted in, in the detention of advocates for religious freedom and related human rights, such as the freedoms of speech, association, and assembly, uh, revise or repeal ordinances and decrees that limit the freedom of expression, assembly, or association, including new regulations banning peacefully, peaceful public protests of property disputes. Um, those are in our recommendation on the Vietnam chapter. Commission's consistency in, in not being swayed by political considerations. It is all about promoting religious freedom, doing it in the most efficacious manner. Uh, so I, I want to thank the Commission, Ted, I want to thank you uh, and, and, and your colleagues on the Commission for, uh, I mean, when Mr. Wolf put that into his legislation back in 1998, it is precisely because we had concerns that the State Department office uh, might find itself at times uh, less likely to speak truth to power and perhaps even compromise. So I, I thank you, and you have been uh, a lightning rod of truth, and I, I do appreciate it. Mr. Kumar. Yeah, uh, from Amnesty International's point of view, we are not against any government uh, having a relationship with any government. That also goes with the uh, U.S. government having cordial relationship with Vietnam. What is missing uh, with uh, Assistant Secretary Campbell's statement was, I can read the full statement, by the way, I hope uh, there is some human rights language, is that that's what is missing. Um, that should be forcefully said, both publicly and privately, and also there should be some benchmarks. I mean, simple things they can do to give some message. Uh, Secretary Clinton can meet with them. You know, you know they can, uh, the, they can behind the scene tell don't worry, Vietnamese don't worry, because meeting. But the mere fact that you, I don't know whether you remember, uh, Congressman Lieutenant Smith, you, uh, you were involved in that when. So the President Clinton went to China. There was a call, I still remember testifying in front of him, urging President Clinton to meet with uh, some political prisoners, and they resisted for six months. That started. Then last minute he met with Israeli Kadir and uh, others. So it should, it's all symbolisms that also matter. So I will say that should be pressured now. The date I mentioned earlier in my opening remarks is that they are getting very close, rapidly. U.S. and Vietnam is getting extremely close. And where does human rights and religious freedom fit in is the question. That's where you come into play, we come into play. And we can say, put benchmarks, then we have to be very specific. That's where the religious freedom office comes into play as well. So it will be make or break. If we lose the battle, then U.S.-Vietnam relationship will be strong, minus human rights. Perhaps any of our witnesses, but I think you two might be the most appropriate. Um, when our U.S. ambassador to Vietnam dismisses and vetoes contact with those who have been, or visits to Con Giao, um, citing it as a land dispute, as Dr. Tong pointed out a moment ago, uh, confiscated properties have always been a human rights issue, whether it be Jewish conf uh, confiscated properties or the Sandinistas who confiscated properties in Nicaragua has always been under the rubric of human rights issues uh, and its full restoration uh, to the greatest extent practicable uh, has always been one of the goals and we do this uh, as a government. Um, I mean, part of the Holocaust work that I'm very much involved with uh, is, is 
belatedly and obviously ineffectively, compared with what the loss was, trying to make sure that those Jewish families that lost uh, their properties in Eastern Europe or in the former Soviet Union, Russia, um, get back at least something that is commensurate with their loss. And, and obviously, usually doesn't even come close. But to somehow put this in another category seems to me to be a, a, a false assertion on the part of the U.S. ambassador. Uh, this is a land dispute, perhaps, but I think it goes far beyond that. Mr. Wolf and I remember uh, our first work on human rights with the Soviet Union and with Romania. Nicholas Ceausescu infamously made a statement uh, that there was no longer any more religious or political prisoners in Romania. So what did he do? What did he do? He just had a pretext for every religious and political prisoner he ever arrested, uh, and it was never for religious or political reasons. Uh, and so there were no more political prisoners by decree, even though his jails uh, were filled to overflowing with religious and political prisoners. And I think uh, this whole problem in, in Kung Zhao is, is, is frankly a thinly disguised persecution of religion, particularly the Catholic faith, but all the other faiths are being persecuted as well. So your thoughts on that, this statement by the ambassador, and, and, and as you go, get to that, in their universal de uh, periodic review, the Vietnamese government said, and your know, words do matter, uh, this is their statement in response to the 123 odd recommendations made by the Universal Periodic Review Working Committee. Vietnam always respects freedom of religion. In Vietnam, the freedom of religion, belief, and worship is enshrined in the Constitution and legal documents consistent with international law. That's the Vietnamese government's response to the UN. Do we take that at face value, or is this nothing but pure nonsense? It's a cotton bulls. More people have been arrested, imprisoned, and tortured. So what we felt, uh, I presume rightly, they at least give some weight to the universal periodic review. That's why they waited after that when they started. Uh, so it, the, the human rights uh, situation has deteriorated after U UPR. That's almost a year now. But whatever they said, you know, they, they agreed to certain things. I, I don't have a full report with me, but they agreed to certain things, but they dismissed other things. The UPR is an exercise. Uh, that in itself is not, uh, not an end to the issue. That's one form of pressure. So, but it should be complemented with other pressures like EU, US, and others. By the way, on Vietnam, EU should be brought in. I mean, that's something, uh, that, uh, that link should be there to exert pressure there. As a member of the Human Rights Council, in your view, is the United States doing enough to bring focus on Vietnam human rights? That's why this hearing is so important. And one, uh, just a thought to Congressman on the, on the U.S. Ambassador's uh, response, uh, that is a uh, land dispute. I would recommend that some of you can get together and just write a letter to him, saying, asking, without mentioning that you mentioned land dispute or anything, saying that we have heard this, what's your response? And let's see, because when we met him a couple of months ago, when he was visiting him, obviously we were a human rights group, so he was saying, oh, every meeting he raises human rights. Uh, so it's important to put him also on the spot. And I don't know whether any of you are planning to visit uh, Vietnam. That will be a great opportunity to visit. Uh, it's, it's, it's important. I mean, I remember uh, Senator Brown back, uh, visited uh, Father Lee in his prison. Oh, you also went there. I visited him when he was in Calcutta, so after he was there. So, you know, the Vietnamese will, when they feel that there is pressure, they will back off. The pressure is not uh, mounting. That's the danger that we are facing. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes. Can I have a comment on this? <coughs> so, we have about more than 100 people from Tong Yau um, living in the United States. And after the crackdown, we send the various petition to each of the congressmen and senators from each state, asking for their help to bring justice to our people. And we, we, we receive many response from the, 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 the congress people. 
and a few of them I received in saying that other than the one that mentioned that uh, Ambassador Amakalak saying that this is a land dispute, they also mentioned that the Ambassador of the United States was on top of this and he, he know everything about this and he do everything to bring the Vietnamese government to attention. And, uh, but at the end, they're saying that, but on our position, we cannot do anything else because that is in Vietnam law. We cannot involve. And I think what he's saying in this letter is like uh, Congressman Cow saying that that's just lip service. And I think that because our people is dying, our people of Colombia are suffering. And we are the citizens of the United States, we are suffering too. And this is not the time for lip service. This is time for action. Time for action. People, people are dying. So we want to relay, ask you to relay this message to the US government, to the administration. That it's time for action, not lip service. The people are dying. And we're asking for their help, for their involvement, real involvement, the intervention. It's not just saying something good anymore. Thank you.